Welcome, and thank you for joining me for this World Skills Master Cam tutorial series, Machining Your Part. Last episode, we went over setting up our part and preparing to machine. In this episode, join me as we walk through creating some toolpaths to rough the first side. First, under the Toolpaths Contextual tab, go to the 2D Gallery and select Face. This is the first look at the chaining dialog box, which is used for 2D toolpath selection. Use the wireframe selection method and set the mode to C-plane. This will help ignore the 3D branches. With chain highlighted, select the top edge. Select OK to exit the chaining dialog box and launch the face toolpath page. Take notice to the left side where there are different pages. These same pages might be used throughout the different toolpaths we create. Each of these toolpaths contain their own parameters for that toolpath. What may be an option for one toolpath may not be available in another. Typically, we will start at the top of the list and work our way down only changing what is needed. On the tool page, select the 10mm flat end mill and adjust any toolpath speeds and feeds needed. Moving to the cut parameters page, set the cutting method drop down to a dynamic approach. This should update the image below showing the expected toolpath motion. Now. Edit the step over distance from 75% of the tool diameter to 35%. Also, we will be leaving zero stock to leave. Depending on a variety of factors, depth cuts may be needed for your operations. Once selected, enter the maximum rough step down to ensure proper depth cuts and even adjust these speeds and feeds as needed. Under the linking parameters for 2D toolpaths, we adjust the tool's movements for specific heights. For this toolpath, Set the heights to absolute whose values are relative to Mastercam's WCS origin. To account for excess material, adjust the feed plane to 15 millimeters as this controls when the tool changes from the rapid feed rate to the plunge feed rate specified on the tool page. For the top of stock, add a few millimeters by typing in plus two and pressing enter. In any calculable field, we can input a math equation and Mastercam will generate the result. With the depth set to absolute zero, select OK to generate this first toolpath. To quickly see this toolpath in action, make sure the folder is selected with a green check mark in the Toolpaths Manager and select the Backplot Toolpaths icon. The Backplot dialog box is launched and clicking play on the playback bar shows how the toolpath is expected to move for this operation. There are also Backplot options, like Simple Verify, that highlights the entire tool diameter to ensure full material removal. Next, we will set up the OptiRough toolpath, which is found under the 3D Gallery Suite. Automatically, the OptiRough toolpath page opens up to the model geometry screen. Instead of using the chaining dialog box for selection, 3D toolpaths are driven off of the model itself. Here, use the Select Entities option and window select the whole model. Then select Enter. Back in the OptiRough toolpath page, let's set the wall stock to leave to 0.2 millimeters and the floor stock to leave to 0.1 millimeters. Moving down to the toolpath control page, let's select the boundary chain, as this is how the toolpath will be contained. Select the top wireframe chain and set the strategy as from outside. Now, the tool will start outside of the boundary and work its way in. Move down to the tool page and select the 10 millimeter end mill for this toolpath. Under the cut parameters page, First, set the Optimize Step Ups option to Next Closest. Now, turn on the Step Up checkbox, which will add Step Up cuts in the positive Z direction. This can help remove material that may be left behind. The Steep Shallow page is where we can set the minimum and maximum depth for this toolpath. Turn both settings on and use the Selection option to pick the maximum depth directly from the Geometry in the Graphics window. Select the bottom outside edge and type minus 2 to update the depth from negative 22 to negative 24. Lastly, expand the linking parameters page and look at the entry motion. Here, we can adjust the size of the entry helix when machining the pocket. Expanding it to a 10 millimeter radius will help aid in chip evacuation and coolant distribution. Once we are finished, select OK to generate the toolpath. The last toolpath we will apply for this episode will be an OptiRest toolpath. This will remachine the pocket and clean up any material left behind. For this, we will be selecting another OptiRough toolpath from the 3D Gallery Suite. 
In the model geometry page, window select the model again and keep the same stock believe for both the walls and floors. Moving to the toolpath control page, let's select a new boundary chain. Since we are only remachining the pocket, let's use solid selection and make sure only the loop function is highlighted. Select the top of the pocket and select OK. Back in the parameters, set the strategy to stay inside of the boundary. Under the tool page, make sure to select a 6mm flat end mill, then move down to the stock page. Here, enabling rest material changes this from an Opti rough to an Opti rest. This allows Mastercam to compute the remaining stock from either a previous operation or from a roughing tool manually entered. Leaving it set to the All Groups option acknowledges both the face and Opti rough toolpath. Finally, go to the linking parameters page. For the high speed toolpaths, these linking parameters help dictate the link between the tool's cutting motion. Here, adjust the type of retract we generate to a minimum distance. Select OK to generate the Opti rest toolpath. We can use the backplot function to investigate the toolpath motion in the slot and center hole. Well, that is all the time we have for this episode. Thank you for joining me and be sure to continue the series as we begin to apply finishing toolpaths to the first side.